songs are they, they can almost pick themselves. Me, Vinny, and John got together and we did uh, a week with Chris in November and we put all the songs on the computer, 20 or 30 ideas, and we picked 10. And the last two, Distant Satellites and Take Shelter, were always in the pipeline. They were always going to be the last two songs. Right. On It could have been on Weather Systems. It could have even been on Wave because we're here. Uh, now was the right time to do them. And then we have the three lost songs, which were great. And those three and those two, it's okay, there's five. That's most of the record. I just put the others in place and we just pick the best tunes and, and just go with it from there. It's it just, it was fun. It was fun and easy. And as for the uh, the other style of music, uh, the electronic stuff, that is just something Vinny and John are big into. They both love the laptop. and Right. So, you know, it's another element to the music. There was time for it to come up because we've got the guitars and we've got the piano and we've got the orchestra and, and the laptop is, is also a part of that. It, yeah. It's in us. It, it's in it's it, particularly in these two. And... Um, you know, it just felt like, okay, now's the time to, to let, it, let it develop and let it go and, and see where it goes and be a little bit adventurous. I, th- yeah. I think what I particularly liked most about, I mean, obviously there's, I, sp- it's, it, it, I don't want to say it's in a record of two halves because yeah, it's it? not, but it does kind of, mm-hmm. it starts off on one journey, but then veers off at this really interesting tangent. Mm-hmm. And I think interesting is the right word because it kind of draws you in. Mm-hmm. It makes you think, oh, what's going on here? Mm-hmm. And then, but it, it, it culminates with this wonderful sort of the final song mm. where you, you kind of match the, the, the sweeping orchestration mm. that, that people kind of expect from what they know of Anathema or they might have known if they got into in the last five years or so mm. with this sort of that, that more electronic mm. sort of direction that, that p- kicks into the album mm-hmm. or, or becomes more prominent in the record about halfway through. Mm-hmm. Right. That's absolutely a wonderful way to end because it just sort of puts the whole thing yeah. in, in a very nice sort of, sort of package where both sides are meeting yeah. head on yeah. um, and balancing out really nicely. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's absolutely right, yeah. And it was John Douglas who insisted on, uh, he insisted on that song going that way because I was 50-50 on which way Take Shelter could have gone. I just liked the song and I was 50-50 and uh, it was John and Vinnie and they said, you've got to do it that way and when you've got a lot of people speaking about the way the music could go it's difficult for me sometimes to to just calm down and, and, and find the answer and I just looked at John and he was like do it like that as close as, close as Danny's original demo as possible you see yeah, right. and we didn't want it to get away from that it's one of the things I was saying earlier on about the songs right themselves we just let it flow naturally the songwriting process so it's um we support each other. It's easy with John. I mean, when I get together with John and Vinny, uh, it, it's just like this mental connection. Like I just have to look at John's face, and I, I often defer to his facial expressions. Mm. Like I don't have to really. He doesn't have to speak. I just look at him, and he goes, "Oh, you know." And I because because <laughs> we've been together for twenty odd years. He's funny as well because we've been together so long, and we grew up together, and all that heritage is common in terms of influences and. It's just uh, very easy going, and you put Krista in that mix, and Krista is like the figurehead to bring it all together, put it all on the computer, lay it all out, make sense of it all, and that's the team. And then obviously everybody else plays and supports that. Daniel and Jamie and everybody they all support that, and Lee is a big part of it. So and that was it. conceptual idea of, of exactly what what you know and, and the way it's done because mm. the first two work you know very well as that open then it sort of reprises itself yeah but so i mean tell us that that story <laughs> i had a little i had a little boss recorder and it's got a it's got a switch on it that says lock lock which means you can't lose the information right but i didn't put the switch on and i'd recorded a riff in 2008-9 about the same time as dreaming light and I was jumping around my flat about this riff. I was like, fuck me! Like, I, I, I was like, I was freaking out and I just thought it's the best, been the best thing we've done for years. And I was like, I can't wait. This is just gonna be, oh my God, this is it, this is it, this is the one. And uh, it disappeared off the recorder and I could never, ever, ever, ever fucking remember it. For the life of me. 
and I asked everybody, I checked through the hard drives of everybody's computer, did I do another demo of this? Somebody tell me somewhere that this riff is somewhere on somebody's computer and it wasn't. And John was like, just tell yourself it was crap. <laughs> <laughs> well, that worked for a while, but what we, do, what we got together, I was in Portugal with the lads, Vinny, and I was consciously trying to remember the riff, trying to remember the time signature, trying to remember what the chords might have been. Couldn't do it, but in trying, those three songs happened. Right. We, we, we got a beat that may have been like that riff, and we got a chord progression that may have been like that chord progression, and the lost song, part one, fell out of the piano because of that, because we were trying to find yeah. something. This other how, thing happened. How can you come up with something that you clearly you thought so strong and you not remember That's it? That's fucking no idea. But, but I mean, I asked, maybe, it was, maybe it wasn't that good. So Danny, I asked, I asked that having, you know, I've done similar things yeah. where it's like you just have a complete mental blank piece of it. But I did. Well, it was a try to write an acoustic finger-picked riff that was based around that. And it, was, there was, it was a decent riff, but it wasn't great. So the only thing was that we wanted to keep from that riff was the time signature right. and the rhythm of the, of the picking. So I kind of suggested a beat that was perfect, that would work perfectly for that. Right. And then at that point, we just forgot the acoustic riff because the beat sounded good on its own. Then the Cardoso was playing that beat and was like, okay, this is a bit special. What is this? And then, bump, yes, there it is, there's the chords, immediately. So it, was, so it came out of the beat. So the songs were written out of the, out of the beat itself, and the beat was written trying to remember something else. The piano melody came just as they were all getting in the car to go to the supermarket, and I started doing that. And then spent the 10 minute drive to the supermarket, just that going around my head. I got out the car, I was like, fuck me! <laughs> <laughs> like, I was just dead quiet in the car with this thing going around my head. And 10 minutes later, I was like, okay, we've got it. And then the and third then part one, two just was right afterwards. Yeah. And then maybe a day or two later was part three, yeah. again from the same thing. So that, and they, they were really, really natural to do. You know, I mean, they were practically done immediately. You can you can you can understand now why you read interviews from musicians that say you know, you know every idea or the thing I come up with goes straight onto my iPhone. Yeah. It's so important to record everything. Yeah. It's so important. Yeah. I mean, and obviously something like that yeah. or any kind of smartphone these days makes that a lot easier to do than Definitely. it used to be. Of like, where's where's the tape recorder? Yeah. yeah, and you're right, and it is easy to forget them. But, and usually you don't forget the good ones, but that one did go, and I don't know why. Maybe it wasn't as good as I thought. Um, yeah, I have a feeling it wasn't, but it's, but it's good that these songs have come out of it, you know. The, that acoustic thing's worked really well for you, hasn't it? I mean, you yeah. did the Union Chapel, yeah. which was, what, two years ago? Mm. Uh, we did it with Opeth a couple of years. I think the first one was, we're here because we're here, three years. Mm. 2010, 11-ish. I think it was then. End of 10. End yeah. of 2010. I mean, what's it for you guys as a band? Do, do, do you um, find that particularly uh, enjoyable because it allows you to sort of present your music in it live, but in a slightly different? Uh, it's you have to you have to reimagine these songs and you strip down, strip it all down. It's um, because almost um, when you have a full band, it's you know you've got that huge it's it's massive sound yeah, behind, it's behind you. Really it's kind of easy, you know what I mean? That's easy, but like to do it acoustically, you have to get to the bare bones of his song and then, you know, change it. Really. I think he sings even even better when he hasn't got that whole wall of words mm -hmm. behind him. You can really hear the purity of, of both the singers. I've heard him sing in Dreaming Light to the Union Chapel. I was like, man, that's better than the album. Well, it's, it's <laughs> thanks, <laughs> but it, it's just incredibly loud when, like with the full band, yeah. you know. So <laughs> it's just, Symbols down your ears, you know. Yeah, God, yeah. <laughs> you know, we start to tell the amps backwards, you know, just to reduce the noise. So got these I, I, remember the, I remember the Coco gig and it was like, when, when you just kicked in, it was like, fucking hell. It was yeah. like, whoa, yeah. that's, that's good. Yeah. But, you know, but then, you know, there's, it's, a, it's a, a much more ethereal sound yeah. that you're creating. I and mean, Union yeah. Chapter obviously is one venue that lends itself so perfectly to that kind of thing. Well, the thing with do Danny's loops, like, is a big part of that. I'm doing, my guitar's more like a keyboard in a way. You know, so you've got like riffs that are looping, beats, bass lines, plus like a key, ambient keyboard, these sorts of sound. You've got three vocalists, 
Danny can Danny can leave those loops running and then switch to the piano and keep that going. So it's it is almost like a full band in a way, like but it's just you know done cleverly. With it doesn't two, give you an earache. That's two good. players. I like chilling out. I like everybody sitting down. Yeah. You know candles. You know nice. I love that. At least it makes you. I think in that in that context, it, you know that they're actually concentrating. Yeah. On what you're playing instead of someone stood at the back of the bar chatting to somebody which it always happens well a lot of a lot of our songs are kind of intimate anyway aren't they you know yeah they're kind of very confessional and very honest so you've got to um you have a certain kind of atmosphere that's that seems a bit more pure but uh, so there's the acoustic side there's the rock side and there's you know the falling deeper side of the band as well we did the orchestral yeah thing. that's that's really cool and you've got three different elements that sometimes can melt together and I guess we've got we've got a bit of electronica these days as well so yeah so, so how's that gonna sort of um uh sort of move its way into into the live show John will handle it I think mm. John yeah. Douglas I mean he's the he's the one with Vinny who brought that to the band largely and he'll handle that he'll have like he'll have pads and percussions and things like that and he'll do it it's something that will eventually grow and grow and grow you know yeah uh, but it's interesting now just to conceive of how we're going to do it, you know, um, it's going to be a challenge.